okay, this is part two because I accidentally pressed stop instead of pause um, when my daughter was calling out for some cream. Uh, um, okay, so um, this is part of the statement from that Felicity Boyd. Um, it's called Relevant Change in Circumstances and Reasons for the Order. Um, so it says date on which the order currently in place was made, 28th of May 2021. Now, um, what's interesting about that is that, um, yeah, that is the date that the latest interim family violence order that I'm still subject to um, was taken out. Um, this is after the flood um, had happened at my house and I was already, uh, my daughter and I were already back living at my parents' house. And um, this was served on me one night um, while I was feeding my daughter um, by just one single police officer um, who even made mention of the fact that, yeah, it was not my fault that I hadn't been in court to hear that application being made because I was never given notice about it. It was just something that was presented to me. It was very unusual. Even she thought that um, this had been done all without my knowledge. Um, I wasn't even um, summoned to come to court and be able to defend myself against having this interim order taken out. It was literally just taken out on the fact that he um, had somehow found out that I was living at my parents' place and he didn't like it because he um, thought it was too close to his house. And um, I still to this day, I'm not 100% sure how he actually found out that I was living there. Um, obviously, um, I've cut contact with a lot of people now but I think I was still in contact with people that were possibly mutual friends and were feeding information back to him um, but anyway he found out somehow so that's yeah how that came about so that order was in place that's the interim order that's still in place now same one so look at the date on it 28th of May 2021 <laughs> Um, anyway, um, it says details of the relevant change in circumstances that have resulted in the making of this application for variation. Okay, so it goes on to say there have been 13 incidents of family violence reported to Tasmania Police since the 20th of August 2018 between the parties. Upon review of the most recent incidents and the collective risk factors outlined in all three incidents, it has been determined that the respondent would be a suitable candidate for an electronic monitoring device to enhance the safety and psychological well-being of Adrian and his son. Um, any additional reasons for the request for variation of the order? Um, it says there is an interim family violence order protecting the complainants from the respondent. Complainant Adrian and the respondent separated in around 2018 due to the respondent's deteriorating mental health. Um, the respondent gave birth to Audrey on 10th of July, 2020. The respondent believes the complainant Adrian is the biological father. However, he denies this fact as they have been separated since 2018. The respondent is the owner of the property at Brighton. Uh, that's my address. However, she is not living at this address, electing to reside with her father at Granton, um, which is one kilometre from the complainant. The respondent's behaviour is escalating and complainant Adrian is fearful for his safety and the safety of his son. Okay, so I've got a few things to say about this. First of all, um, that stuff about how we separated in 2018 due to my deteriorating mental health, um, that is incorrect. Um, the reason was that I was pregnant and he was trying to force me to have a termination of the pregnancy. I made it very clear that he wanted um, not to have any more children. He actually doesn't like um, being a father and um, yeah, he said all kinds of things to me like how he, you know, never had problems in the past convincing um, his other girlfriends to terminate their pregnancies. Um, the only reason that he tells me that he didn't terminate um, the pregnancy which resulted in his son that he has now is because it was too far down the track when she realised she was pregnant. I actually suspect maybe she just um, did that on purpose because she knew as he'd already talked her into having a termination before and she probably didn't want him to do it to her again. So anyway, that's just my personal thoughts on it. But 
um, yeah, he tried to bribe me. He tried to um, offer me a um, all expenses paid trip to Fiji for my birthday if I would um, terminate the pregnancy. Um, he invited me out for coffee and then drove me to a family planning clinic and forcibly took me out of the car, dragged me by the arm to go in there and um, sent me many, many um, threatening and harassing and coercive text messages um, asking me, like, uh, when am I going to have a termination? Um, you know, just, yeah, very cruel things. I'm like, going to it all now, but the police have that phone with the text messages on it, so they should have been able to read them all um, if they cared to. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so my mental health, I've always been open about the fact that I do have a diagnosed mental illness, and um, I've had that for a very long time. I've had that um, even before I met him. I had that mental illness. It was just that I only got diagnosed in... Um, yeah, I would have got diagnosed in 2018 with the mental illness. It was actually a good thing getting diagnosed because I was able to then get um, help. And for the first time in my life, I can understand myself better. And um, I've done the intensive therapy and, um, yeah, I, I manage my mental health quite well. But, um, yeah, it's quite... I do find it offensive that he does always rely on that and paint me as this, um, I guess, a, um, what I've been described as mentally deranged and unstable and um, dangerous because I have a mental illness. And um, yeah, he always relies on that as the reason why he just had to break up with me. He also doesn't ever mention that um, that he um, broke up with me via a text message while I was pregnant as well. And then went on to contact Relationships Australia to um, send out a letter um, trying to make me go to mediation where he would be applying for 50% custody of the child as well. Um, obviously I ignored that. I didn't want anything to do with him and I wasn't going to let him have anything to do with the child as I was actually in fear of what he would do to the child based on things that he'd said to me. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, who breaks up with someone in a text message anyway? A coward. <laughs> Only cowards do that. Um, so, oh, and I, I don't know why he always says this thing about how I tell people he's the biological father of, um, Audrey, because, um, I, well, I just, I just, I find that offensive as well. I don't know if that's something he genuinely believes, but it's, um, yeah. I don't think there's anything more I can really say on that. It's just I find that deeply offensive. Um, yeah, now, again, this stuff about where there's making it sound like I'm choosing to live with my parents um, to be closer to him. Um, that's not the case, obviously. Um, and I have the proof that my house was flooded and unlivable at the time. And um, of course I'm gonna to go to my parents' place because, you know, why wouldn't I? Um, also interesting that it states in there that it's one kilometer from um, his address because um, in the past, um, the police have made a big deal about saying that it's less than a kilometer um, and have prevented me from being allowed to go to my parents' place. So um, yeah, there's, there's also a lot of inconsistent information will um yeah that will come out um and apparently my behavior escalating i mean it's just ridiculous like ugh, escalating how i this stuff isn't even proven um right so now it goes on complainant adrian informed police that on numerous occasions he has found dirty nappies on his property and he believes the respondent is responsible he also reported to police that about 8.45am on Monday, the 19th of April, 2021, he arrived at work and checked his emails. He had been forwarded two emails to his personal work email from the general administration inbox email account. This account is a shared inbox and is accessible to all administration officers statewide. And the first email read, I need to confess to my abuse of power. I've been using my position to harass my ex-girlfriend through the courts. I took out a restraining on her just because I can and because I'm a little bitch. She, oh, stay tuned for the photos of my Viagra prescription and the dick pics I've been sending to my work colleagues. The email subject line was attention, the management, and the email was sent from email address and it's 
got an email address with his name on it. Um, and it was received on Sunday, 18th of April, 2021 at 4.50 p.m. There were five attachments to the email which appeared to complainant Adrian to be legal submissions completed by the respondent's lawyers in relation to recent allegations of breaches of the interim family violence order. These submissions contain defamatory and untrue statements about complainant Adrian oh, oh, perpetrating family violence resulting in miscarriage and a sexual assault. Complainant Adrian became concerned about the content of the email as it could have been viewed by many employees. He reported his concerns that the email and its attachments may have a detrimental effect on his employment, including his reputation. The second email contained a segment of a coronial fi finding. Oh, they've written funding. I think it's meant to say finding. In relation to Daryl Cook, Daryl Cook stood trial for the murder of... Uh, v Vula, I think her name is, Vula De Deloise, in September 2018 and was found not guilty on the basis that he was not criminally responsible for his action due to his insanity. The email read, you only have to read this coroner's report. I've got blood on my hands. The email was sent from the same email account as the above email and was received at 4.59pm. The email subject line was Adrian and his surname plus incompetent incompetency. Again, complainant Adrian believes that this communication is an attempt to demean his professional competency and reputation. Complainant Adrian believes the respondent is, is responsible for creating and sending both emails as this sort of harassment in which, as this sort of harassment in which the responsible person is concealed is not only typical of her behaviour, I also believe that it is likely that only Jennifer and her lawyer would have access to the court submissions. Tasmania Police continues to investigate this matter. So all I can really say about that is, um, as I've mentioned in a previous video, um, uh, yeah, several years ago when I did have a Facebook account and I'm sure my mental health was um, starting to deteriorate a bit around that time with all the stress that I just mentioned, um, yeah, I did put all of those lawyer notes that they're referring to. Um, it was my plea mitigation written by my lawyer who told me to plead guilty. Um, I put them all up on Facebook and I also emailed them to um, like so many people, like I think local MPs, um, friends, work colleagues, like I just guessing maybe like a hundred people plus the fact that I put it public up on Facebook. So yes, I did do that. Um, but I didn't do what it's saying in here that I supposedly done. Um, the coroner's report they're referring to, um, I've looked that up myself and you can freely find that um, just by typing in a Google search. And it does mention Adrian by his full name in there too, as he was someone who had to interview this Daryl Cook while he was in prison and assess his suitability for um, parole. So yeah, you can go and read that if you want to. Um, yeah, I find this interesting too, that again, like this last line, how it says about how, um, this sort of harassment is typical of me, like based on what, um, anyway, that's all I can really say. Oh, and that it's only likely, it's likely that only Jennifer and her lawyer would have access to those court submissions. No, no, it's not. Um, right. So. Next part says 10th of June, 2021. Complainant Adrian located envelopes and junk mail inside his letterbox. When he pulled out the mail, he found...